Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. This is the uh, sixth uh, Sunday after the Epiphany. A special welcome to any uh, guests or visitors who are with us uh, this morning. As we begin worship, we just have a few announcements uh, today. Uh, the high school youth group invites you to, if you want to, to return uh, later this evening for their annual Super Bowl party that they uh, host. Uh, that Super Bowl party will be held in our media rooms at 5 o'clock uh, this evening. Once again, if, if you're looking for something to do this evening, need some uh, food, fellowship, and football, uh, join our youth group uh, here for the Super Bowl party at 5 o'clock. Two weeks from today, uh, we will have one of our semi-annual uh, congregational uh, meetings uh, that will be held on um, the 26th, February 26th. We'll have our normal services, but then after this, this uh, second service, we'll have a light lunch uh, down in the fellowship area and then we'll are in the um, meeting rooms and then have our congregational meeting. Uh, that uh, meeting is not really going to be about money or about uh, building or finances, things like that. Uh, this congregational meeting is focused more uh, just on our mission and ministry. One of the, the wonderful things that we continue to do here at uh, St. Paul's uh, in service uh, to our own congregation members, but also to our community. Uh, the, uh, there'll be annual, the annual report will be there. We'll look at things from the, um, last year, 2022, all the activities we had uh, this past year. So it'll be a, just really a meeting of celebrating um, how God continues to, to work through us uh, in his kingdom. Next Sunday is a Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, we'll have a communion at both uh, services uh, for Transfiguration Sunday, also the, the Wednesday after that. So uh, Wednesday, February 22nd, uh, will be our Ash Wednesday uh, services. Uh, please see the bulletin for more information about Ash Wednesday and our midweek uh, services. Uh, especially, also, we have uh, information there about the imposition of ashes uh, that we will have uh, throughout the day on Wednesday uh, um, the 22nd, so February 22nd. Once again, uh, Lent is just around the corner, so please see our, our bulletin for all those service times. Uh, with that, we begin our service with the ringing of the bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. And the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, but if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, cannot address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. But only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser, while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny." You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell." It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. 
Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess together the holy Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go! Well, what happened? Why didn't you go? Why didn't you do it? First, though, you must resolve what the it is before proceeding. Is it a race? Or a test? Or something else? Second, you need to know how to respond to it. Does it mean we need to simply think and meditate it through? Or do we need this to have some physical response? Or is it something else? So, are you ready? No. You're not ready. Paul makes mention in the epistle reading for this morning to the church in Corinth that they, like us, are not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready because of the sinful flesh that holds us captive. We are not ready. We live in a fallen world, a world which tries to tear us apart. We are not ready. Because every time if we take a spiritual step forward, it seems like we're taking two steps back. And there's that problem of resolving the issues that we even have among ourselves, let alone the division that exists in the world. We are not ready. Paul's correct in his assertion that we are not a spiritual people. Our hearts and minds do not reflect the insight of being built on Christ and in Christ. The psalmist writes, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. We are not ready for the Lord God's judgment. We are not ready to receive His righteousness. Yet Paul writes, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. So if we are of the flesh, if we are not ready for God's judgment and or His righteousness, how should we respond? Paul gives us a clue in his letter to the church in Galatia about it. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. We tend to focus on the first part of that reading from Galatians, for us to do good, us to act upon it. But we know, though, if we act, we can't really succeed. Because we fall short of the glory of God. We are sinners. We need to remember about that end statement that we often forget. We are the household of faith. Faith is the key. Our response, it flows out of faith. Not of anything within the flesh, not of anything of the ways of this world. It flows out of that faith. The God-given faith that was injected into us by the power of the Holy Spirit. There at that font where water and word hit your head, there is where faith was given. The Word of God that comes to you, that speaks by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is what gives us that gift of Christ's grace. There is where faith is. There is where faith is given. In Christ and in Him alone do we have that simple yet complex construct. Because we, who are still sinful in the flesh, we are made anew, having that mind of Christ for us to act and to live out that love that was shown to us through Jesus' cross and empty tomb. For we are to continually grow in that love of Christ, love that He has shown unto us, 
growing in Christ. That is the it that Paul was talking about in our epistle reading for this morning. For Paul writes later on in the church, to the church in Ephesus, for rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. For when each part is working properly, making the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. We grow in Christ. We grow in his love. That is the it that we need. That is the it that we have. Our focus should be on growing in Christ. For when we show forth His love for us in our lives, our focus should be about growing in God's Word. For Paul had to write in our epistle reading for today, what then is Apollos? What then is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. For I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God gives the growth. We are to be nurtured by God's judgment, which is fulfilled for us on Christ's behalf. His righteousness is given unto us as that free gift of grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift from God. The growing in it comes down to something so mundane while yet so extraordinary that often in times we actually take it for granted. We have heard it a couple times in the past several weeks as we have walked our way through the epistle readings of 1 Corinthians. Paul has to remind the church in Corinth and us, we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And that is what we preach. That is what we grow in. Continually preaching Christ. Hearing Christ. Growing in Christ. Every Sunday when we come to these, to inside these walls, when we come to sit here together, we hear Christ. We hear that message of that spiritual milk given unto us. Christ died for you. He rose for you. He lives for you. This is the simple message. It is the gospel. And every day, it boils down to that simplicity of the gospel. And from it unfolds the complexity of where our lives intersect with God's word, that word of law and that word of gospel. For this is the conclusion. While we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows us his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the simple message. Christ crucified. He suffered, he died, he was buried. Christ rose from the dead. This is that spiritual milk that we yearn for, that we drink from day in and day out. Christ comes to us. But what does it look like to partake in that solid food then? Moving past that Christ is crucified, Christ risen, Christ lives. What does it look like as we move past that? to partake in that solid food that Paul was talking about. It looks like being mature. Growing that maturity as we gain and grow in the faith in Christ. We gather together here in this place, in this house of the Lord, to once again hear His Word, to be nourished for what He has to give unto us. Here we come together to be fed with that word, to be strengthened in the faith, to know that we do not go through this life alone. It looks like the maturity of gathering together in this place and here at the foot of the altar to be fed with that holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be nourished and strengthened in the faith. That's maturity and that's growing. 
We gather together and study God's word in and out of being here in this place, in our small groups, in Sunday school, in Bible study, whatever it might be, as we gather together as the body of Christ to study his word, to read, to mark, to learn, to inwardly digest it. That's being nourished in that solid food, being in the word. For that solid food is that growth in Christ that we live in perseverance. We live growing as mature Christians. We live knowing that we will suffer for Christ's sake, and yet we go on living. We go on growing. For even though we are not ready for it, growth happens anyway. Christ continues to come to us, his people. Spiritual growth takes place in our lives, even as we live not of the flesh or the ways of this world, but as we live for Christ and him alone. So we live. We live in Christ. We grow in Christ. We continue to unite together as a body in Christ. The author to the letter of the Hebrews states it this way, For therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, every sin which clings so closely to us, and let us run with endurance that race that is set out before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We look to Jesus. We grow in Jesus. And we let this growth happen. For God is merciful and gracious to us. His love knows no bounds. So we continue to grow in Christ. Let us grow in Christ together. Let us take that spiritual food and be nourished by it. As we read His Word, as we are mindful of our baptism, as we partake in this holy supper of His body and blood, let us grow together as the body of Christ, growing together in every way, uniting together. For as Paul says, we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. For we are ready. We are ready to grow. We are ready to go. We are ready to be nurtured by Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God that even though we aren't ready, we are because He continues to feed us and give us the growth through His Word and sacraments. Amen. Now grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for to him be the glory both now and to that day of eternity when he returns. Amen. We sing our hymn as the offerings are brought forward.
Please stand for prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you came down from heaven to die for the sins of the entire world. Through the good news of your salvation, send your Holy Spirit into the hearts of those who do not yet believe and trust in you. Work faith in the hearts of all unbelievers so that all who hear of your mercy and compassion may receive the gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Give to your church a sense of urgency in proclaiming the good news. Grant safety and protection to those who share your love here and also overseas, including Pastor Michelle Liu as they serve the Chinese mission of our congregation, Pastor and Irene Paul serving in the Taiwan, and Brian and Barb Swords working in Asia. We also pray your blessing to rest upon our congregation members, including Tara Selby, Wendy, Zach, and Joseph Sharp, Eric and Ethan Sloan, Jody, Zach, Zachary, and Abigail Smith, and Kathy Smith. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, source of all abiding knowledge, through word and spirit you both enlighten the minds and sanctify the lives of those whom you draw into your service. Continue to bless the faculty and staff of Evansville Lutheran School, as well as all students and families, that your gracious, redeeming love might resound in our classrooms, our hallways, and homes. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, all life is precious to you. Your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, you have permitted the devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Direct all efforts to attend to the injured, console the bereaved, and protect the helpless. Deliver any who are still in danger and bring hope and healing that they may find relief and restoration. We commend to you, to you all keep... We commend to your keeping all who work to bring rescue and relief in the midst of this devastation. May this time of tragedy turn many hearts to you in faith that they might know that you are the one true God who creates and redeems all of life. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, by water and spirit, you work forgiveness of sins, rescue from death and the devil, and give eternal salvation. Grant to all those who suffer from injury, disease, or any type of pain or affliction the assurance that you are with them in their own baptisms as they have been baptized into your holy name. Bless those who are sick, those hospitalized, those recovering from surgery, including Bob Grant, Frank Rankowicz, John Woodson, Bob Hartman, Becca Anderson, Kayla Spicer, Mark Kell, Ruth Bashir, Carolyn Sparks, Bob Hoffman, Darlene Hatfield, Barbara Miller, Mike Ruber, Alan Goldie, Diane Hoffman, Jim Rainey and family, Zona Morgan, Tom Gant, Andy Weber, Liz, Mary Fuchs, Dorothy Teakin, Arlene Carter, and Rosalind Dixon. Deal compassionately with your servants and bless them with your healing power. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, grant joy to all those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including Yang Yong and Min Chin Lin. Ralph and Debbie Paulson, Ron and Rosemary Watson, and Bob and Margaret Fender. May their marriages be built upon the solid foundation of your never-ending love. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 8. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been written and hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, and him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful their marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.